One of the things you may have been hearing about in the media, maybe Glenn Beck or on TV or radio and newspaper blogs and so on and so forth, is this idea of the Hindenburg Omen. Now, this was pretty well defined in this particular article by Austin Bramwell. He says that the Hindenburg Omen, it's being followed by the media quite a bit, supposedly portends stock market collapses. So the omen is triggered when more than 2.2% of NYSE Composite Index's stocks are finding new highs while another 2.2% or more of the issues are creating new lows. The lesser of the two numbers has to be larger than or equal to 69. The NYSE 10 also has to be rising. And the McClellan Oscillator, a measure of market breadth based on advancing and declining stocks, has to be negative on that day. All those criteria are met and the stock market goes down. He says, got that? Me neither. Well, he's making fun of it because it's an example of data mining. Now, data mining is when you are looking for causation or correlation relationships between two things. For example, you may have heard me talk about the idea of butter production in Bangladesh. Somebody was going through the United Nations database and they found that the S&P 500 and butter production in Bangladesh were highly correlated. Now, no serious person would go and look at butter production in Bangladesh before they invest, and that's the idea. Somebody was data mining there. You know, we can actually use the example of NFC linebackers intercepting more passes than AFC safeties, and the stock market goes up, or lunar eclipses on the west coast being a good predictor of stock market movements. We would look at that as all nonsense, really. But there are people out there that do this for a living. We call them technical analysts or chartists sometimes. Now, a chartist or a technical analyst will look for information and they will try to figure out where the market's going to go based on that information. And typically, they'll look at information that seems to make some sense. A good example of this is Harry Dent. Harry Dent was a guy that actually took demographic trends, birthing rates in the United States. He found, as many of you would know, that at various ages, people spend more money. So if we can figure out the ages of people in America when they were born and how many people are going to be in that particular cohort or age group, we can figure out where people are going to spend more money and hence what's going to drive the stock market. Well, he published a book and he actually put this chart in it that you see behind me. The black chart is actual demographic trends or birthing rates. Now there's a lighter bar that moves right along with it and that's the movement of the S&P 500. He thought he found something very interesting here. He thought he figured out that the S&P 500 and this birthing trend chart were so highly correlated that it could tell him where the stock market was going to go in the future. Based on birthing trends and his statistics and his work, he predicted that the S&P 500, or the Dow Jones Industrial Average more precisely, was going to be at 40,000 right now. Now, those of you that have been looking around at the stock market know it's nowhere near that. Well, when it turned out not to be at 40,000, he quickly wrote a new book about the Great Depression. So he changed his tune really quick. Well, that is a lot of time what people will do in terms of charting or technical analysis. Matter of fact, there was a study out of Massey University out of New, New Zealand. They examined more than 5,000 technical trading rules to see if they added value. The result was that they did not. In fact, academics, well, quite often they'll pick on a lot of this stuff and they'll say that, you know, I'd like to compare, one academic said, I'd like to compare chartists to astrologers, but I hate to give astrologers a bad name. So the whole idea of the Hindenburg Omen, uh, I'll talk about it more on the show this weekend, but you know, I think that's one of those things that you can just kind of put to bed, don't worry about it, don't think about it, because it's just another example of data mining. And actually, when you hear me get into it on the show, you'll find out it's a really bad case of data mining, not something that you need to worry a whole lot about or spend time on. But realize that it does sell books, it does sell magazines and it actually gets people interviewed on the radio and that is a lot of these people, that's their primary goal is to create some fear knowing that nobody's going to really check up on them in the future or test what they did and actually hold them accountable for what they told the public in the past. We'll catch you next time.